Good morning. I am Mike Reinhardt. Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service from the United Church of Big Rapids. The United Church of Big Rapids is a church affiliated with both the United Church of Christ and the Presbyterian Church USA. We are proud to be an open and affirming more like church. Today is Sunday, June 13th, the third Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad that you have chosen to worship with us. Our service will continue to be on the radio and live streamed on Facebook and YouTube with a recording available on those platforms and on our website after the worship service. If you would like to follow today's scripture readings in your Bible, they are taken from Luke chapter 16 verses 1 through 12 and 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 17 through 19. Our guest minister today is the Reverend Andy D. Brauber. Our organist is Mr. Paul Heidemann. Our liturgist for today's service is Alice Banstra. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Alice Banstra, liturgist for today's service. Welcome to today's worship at the United Church of Big Rapids. Whether you are listening over the radio or watching our live stream or joining us here in the sanctuary, we are glad you have joined us today and welcome you to this sacred time and space. The United Church of Big Rapids is a congregation that worships together seeks opportunities to serve others, encourages one another to grow in intellect and spirit, strives for social justice, and fully embraces Jesus' call to love one another as God loves us. Because we believe God's whole creation is good, blessed, and sacred, we are an open and affirming community of faith. We celebrate persons of all races, ethnicities, sexual orientations, gender identities and expressions, family structures, faith backgrounds, abilities, and economic circumstances. As valued members of this congregation, all persons are invited to equally participate in the full life of the church. Worship, sacraments, ministry, fellowship, leadership, responsibilities, sorrows, blessings, and the continued presence of Jesus Christ. Our prelude is, It is well with my soul.
Please join responsively in the call to worship. With hearts that forgive as freely as you have given, with enthusiasm of spirit for the gift of life, with music which declares your everlasting goodness, with prayers for mutual understanding and peace, we worship you with joy. With creative pursuits which contribute our God-given talents, with words which honor you as creator, redeemer, and Holy Spirit, with time volunteered and dedicated to service in church and community, with years committed to extending the love of Jesus Christ, we worship you with you. With gifts of money which reach farther than we can manage ourselves, with deeds done in service of neighbor and stranger, with holy days set apart to celebrate your goodness and grace, with family and friends distant and nearby, we worship you, God, with grateful hearts and joyful spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Our first hymn is O oh for a World. both the church and the Christian Ed Commission. And I'm waiting for the honoree to come up and join me. For those in your congregation, you'll see Rhea approaching. Today we're honoring Rhea with her high school graduation. Um, and for you to know, Rhea grew up in this church. She was baptized, she was confirmed. And she's been part of Sunday school, youth events, assisting with nursery care. Uh, she's been a volunteer groundskeeper and beautifier of the grounds. And I'm getting an echo. She has been part of our Winterfest program in the winter, carpet cleaning, movie night. And when we first, with COVID, went to a remote service. Uh, some of you may remember, we uh, did it from up here in the front of the sanctuary with handheld cameras and laptops. Rhea was part of making that work until we got a more complete system. Then when we went to working on our morning services by pre-recording, some of the rest of you have been parts where we'd all do our part from our house and then combine them. Uh, she used to be a liturgist and would record from her house and send it in to us. Most recently, and that's where she was when we started, she's been the OBS software operator, which means where she sits at a station in the back here when we're broadcasting on YouTube and Facebook, 
She is what leads to those of you at home that are watching, seeing hymn tune words, uh, seeing different scenes of the church, and hearing everything that's going on. If Rhea wasn't back here, I'm not quite sure what we'd have come out on the air. This morning we have two awards for uh, Rhea. One is the Marie Rose Scholarship, for those of you who've been with the church a long time, and the plaque at the back. Marie Rowe was a long-term and faithful member of this church and a long-term teacher in the Big Rapids schools. Uh, a scholarship was started in her name and we continue to fund it today. And, yeah, there is your scholarship. Then from the church as a whole and Christian Ed arranging, we have a study Bible for her to take with her as she goes on her additional travels in life. Further, we'd like to make sure you come to coffee hour today because we have a cake for Rhea and a chance to congratulate her. I just want to say thank you to the church and to my family for supporting me all throughout the years. So thank you. Thank you, Rhea. Hi, my name is Deb Ducat, and I have worked with Wayne for the last many years with the Christian Ed Group. And while it is wonderful to support our youth, we would like to take this time to support the person who helped support our youth for so many years with all of the activities in the church, all of the youth groups, specifically Winterfest, which was huge. There were some weekends we had over 170 extra kids here and somehow it all came into play. So this is our way of thanking Wayne and Maxine. As the top left Corner says, Winterfest is because of you, Wayne McKay. So thank you. Our scripture lessons for today come from the books of Luke and 1 Timothy. Please pray with me. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may the Spirit of God rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. The first scripture lesson is from the book of Luke, chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the disciples, there was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an account of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now, now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, And how much do you owe? A hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. 
and his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in the very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? The second lesson is from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. As for those who in the present age are rich, command them not to be haughty or to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but rather on God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, generous and ready to share, thus storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of the life that really is life. This is what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Oh, have a hymn. Let's have a hymn. Got to turn the page. Our second hymn is Lift Every Voice and Sing.
morning to those of you who are out there on the radio and on YouTube and Facebook, as well as uh, here in the sanctuary. As we sing that song, uh, I'm reminded of a couple things. One, it is often known as the African American National Anthem, a well known popular song and tune by James Weldon Johnson. And also, yesterday was Loving Day, celebrating the um, uh, making interracial marriage legal uh, in a loving case in the Supreme Court. So have you ever had one of those mornings? (laughs) Today, I really wanted to be here early because I like spending time with y'all. And uh, I I was on track, things were going well. I knocked a picture off the wall. Not only off the wall, but it went down the stairs. And then I'm down in the kitchen getting ready, and I'm kayaking after this, so I just got a bag of food and water together, and I knocked that off the buffet, and the water bottle open, and, ah, yes. So, if you would, take a deep (laughs) breath with me. (laughs) Nice deep breath down into your belly. Hold it there a second. Let it out. All the way out. And do it again. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My name is Andy DeBraber. I'm a generosity officer with the United Church of Christ. And it's my pleasure to be here for the third week in a series on the spirit of generosity. The spirit of generosity past, present, and future. And today we look at the future with the theme of hope. And it's uh, thus very appropriate that Rhea was here, and we congratulate you, Rhea, and to honor Maria Rowe, who looked forward with hope and generosity, and you all did, in making this scholarship possible, Uh, and also Wayne and, was it Maxine, Uh, celebrating all the hope that they've helped bring into this world their work with the youth. So a week ago, we celebrated our son's high school graduation. Ezra had an open house last Saturday. Uh, He's a great kid. We love Ezra dearly. He has an extremely bright future, I truly believe. Don't all parents. Uh, However, being a traditional student has never been Ezra's forte. When he does his work, And when he turns it in, it's often stellar. But there's that doing it and turning it in part. So, well, let's just say we were happy that he graduated. (laughs) So if you remember last Saturday, you'll recall that it was sunny and sweltering. It was 90 degrees in our backyard. And yet people showed up. They took the time out of their weekend schedules to be there on a sweltering Saturday afternoon. They came to see and to congratulate Ezra on his graduation, to see and congratulate my wife Liz and me on Ezra's graduation. His preschool teacher came, Mrs. Wilson. His first grade teacher came, Mrs. French, with her children. Our neighbors from the house we lived in until he was nine came with their four young boys. His reading and writing specialist teacher from fourth grade, Mrs. Gidry, came, without whom we may have never had a graduation party. Should have seen Ezra's eyes light up when he saw Mrs. Gidry. A member of Douglas Congregational United Church of Christ which helped raise Ezra for the first nine years of his life, Mike Ramirez came. Friends from elementary school, middle school, high school came, Aiden and Lucas and Eris, the teacher who introduced him in 10th grade to his chosen field of aviation electronics. Proud Papa moment, a year ago, he was one of five youngest certified aviation electronics uh, technicians in the world. Mr. Hall came. The list goes on. You get the idea. You've been there. 
These folks impacted Ezra's life with their presence over the last 18 years. Mike from Douglas UCC told me he remembered a Sunday when he was the children's worship leader, and it was only our children, Ezra and Anna. It was also Palm Sunday, and so they reenacted the Palm Sunday scene of Jesus entering Jerusalem on the donkey, waving the branches, the palms. Mike played the donkey, and our children alternated between playing Jesus and playing the palm wavers, uh, getting on his back and off his back as they went around the Friendship Hall there at Douglas UCC. When Mike was leaving the party, I thanked him for really the profound influence he had on our children. And he said, no, I was just the donkey. And I said, no, I know better than that. Whether through their work as teachers, through their nearness to Ezra or us as neighbors and friends, through their volunteer efforts, people who were there last week had given of themselves to form this young man into the wonderful person that he is today. They truly saw him for who he was. They listened to him. They paid attention to him and generously offered their gifts to him, words of encouragement and instruction and hope They offered a presence of comfort and of celebration for all of them and for their gifts. We are deeply grateful. And then they took the time to show up again last week on that hot Saturday afternoon. Not only that, they left Ezra gifts. So on Tuesday night, we sat down together in our living room and opened and read all the cards, most of which included money of some kind. And afterwards, we sat in awestruck gratitude for the generosity of folks who have provided such a nice financial launching pad for Ezra. I was both amazed and inspired by some of the gifts, inspired to be even more generous myself. You may never know the impact you are having on others by your generosity of time, of kindness, of compassion, of financial gifts, whether a graduate, a relative, a stranger, a friend, a neighbor. As a recent donor to the United Church of Christ said in making a sizable designation for the United Church of Christ in his end-of-life giving plans, he said, I am giving towards an uncertain future. I'm giving towards an uncertain future. And really, isn't that what all giving is when we do it well? We give out of our values, out of our hopes and dreams for what might happen with our gift in the world. And we give with open hands, without conditions, without knowing what will happen to the money we give. Oh sure, we we think we know, but it doesn't always work out that way. Whether it's the $20 bill to... Ezra at graduation, the dollar bill to the person begging on the side of the street, or the $100,000 gift to the church at our passing, we are giving to an uncertain future. And yet, we are also giving out of hope. This $50 gift will keep food on the table for a family that would otherwise go hungry. This $100 gift will create a playscape that will host children for decades to come. This $500 gift will make it possible for our pastor to be present with a dying member and their family at the bedside, bringing comfort and peace in times of sorrow and mourning. Gifts to the Maria Rowe Fund will make it possible for young people to move on in the next chapter of their life in ways they might not have been able to otherwise. And like any investment, there's a risk that it won't pay off. But I say to you today, take that risk. Be playful with it, even. You and I want to be good stewards of our money and of our gifts. 
but we also have great hopes and dreams for the world. Some of the people and groups working on those hopes and dreams are on the most cutting edge of that work, which means they might fail. You know, in business, we're fine with that. We have research and development teams that try all kinds of things that fail before they succeed in some. This isn't in my script. Uh, we, we have started a research and development department at the United Church of Christ. Because we know to be church faithfully moving forward, we need to do things differently. We need to be on the cutting edge of what it means to be church and to be present and to be love and to be Christ and to be God in the world. So give to things that might not succeed. Give to things that are on the cutting edge, that are making a difference. Because even if they fail, something has been learned. Something has been gained. And there will still be something to build on. Whatever we give, we give out of hope. Whether what is hoped for is in the more immediate future or a more distant future. We are investing hope into an uncertain future. And I say to you, more often than not, that investment will pay off. Your dividends will be rich, even if we never see the return on that investment. Others have, and others will. Around 1950, so just a mere 71 years ago, a woman named Isabel Graham died in Chicago. She had grown up in Douglas, Michigan, and she still vacationed there periodically. And when in town, she attended Douglas Congregational United Church of Christ, a congregation that I had the pleasure of serving for nine years as pastor. Her father, a carpenter, had literally helped build the church building, including crafting and carving their beautiful pulpit. And when Isabel Graham died in 1950, she left $5,000 to Planned Parenthood of Chicago, and $5,000 to Douglas Congregational United Church of Christ. I don't know the exact details of this, but I do know that the monies were put into an investment trust fund that couldn't be touched for about 40 to 45 years. The church would receive small periodic dividends from this fund, so they knew it was there. And the monies were invested wisely during those decades in blue chip stocks like IBM and General Motors from 1950 to 2000. Can you imagine what those stocks did? In the meantime, while that money was growing, the church and congregation at Douglas UCC was declining. It had dwindled down to about a dozen worshiping members on a Sunday. And I truly believe that had they not known this gift was out there and coming, the congregation would have closed its doors. That beautiful, small, clapboard church might today instead be a restaurant or condos or raised for something else. But because of the hope given by that gift, they held on. And in the 1990s, when the funds were finally released, the church received a check for more than $750,000. Over the next decade, those funds were used to sustain the church's operating expenses through tough times, to improve the buildings, to support local nonprofit organizations, and to match all the gifts from the church to the national and conference settings of the United Church of Christ. The church has since grown and is an incredibly healthy and thriving church. The Isabel Graham Fund now has over $1.2 million in it. It is no longer used for church operating expenses. Half of the growth each year is given away to local organizations and then to m matching gifts to the national setting of the United Church of Christ and the Michigan Conference. While some funds are still used as matching gifts for capital campaigns. Whatever you have to give, including your time, your skills, your possessions, your money, when you give it, you are investing in a better future. You are investing in hope 
for the future. You are investing hope into the future. Give generously, and we will receive generously in return, and the world will be a better place. As you consider how you might invest financially in hope for the world, let me offer you a few considerations. One I mentioned last week, if you were here with us. Consider having a plan for your giving. What are the areas of your world that you would like to see better off a year from now, a decade from now, a hundred years from now? Pick one or two of those areas to invest in most heavily. That doesn't mean you don't give to others regularly or periodically, but you have a focus and you have a reason that fits with your purpose and being in the world. And you also then have the opportunity to see your giving and the effects that it has over time and to invest your time, if you'd like to, in those places. That's first. Second has been brought to light, especially in recent years. Consider giving back some of what we have stolen. Those aren't words we like to hear. Consider giving back some of what we have stolen. It's a hard pill to swallow, but most of us, in some way or other, have benefited from the genera- generational wealth that was and in some ways continues to be built on the backs of people of color. From slavery to redlining to massacres, to cheap food. Similarly, we have benefited from stolen lands we live on while our country has failed again and again to honor the agreements or treaties made with indigenous nations of this land. So consider giving way, ways of giving that will give back and return some of that. Personally, we have some friends that my uh, daughter has befriended up in the UP by Michigan Tech who are native farmers, and they have opportunity to expand their farmland by buying some adjacent property. So that's where our giving is going right now. Third, as you consider your end-of-life giving, be that a simple will or a bequest or a trust or some other instrument like a charitable gift annuity, consider giving some of it away now. Why wait until you're dead? What's the fun in that? Consider giving it some of it away now. Perhaps your children or your grandchildren or your neighbors or fellow church members or whoever would really find their lives seriously changed by a gift right now. Whether that's $500, $5,000, $50,000. And in addition, you will be passing on a legacy of generosity. We have some family friends who are exceedingly generous in many, many ways. And financially, they are able to be exceedingly generous in part because they received money from their parents, who are still alive, to buy the house they live in. So they have no house payment. They're able to be exceedingly generous in their community. What a gift. In addition, I would suggest, in addition to leaving money and assets to your children, Consider leaving money to the church or other charitable organizations. Many people now are, for instance, uh, well, in my case, for instance, we have two children. So many people are, are taking their assets that they would leave behind when they pass away, and if they have two children, pretending they have three. Leave a third to each of my children and a third to charities, the church and others. Or take half of it, and each child gets a quarter, and a half goes to charities. These are ways that you can carry on your legacy in the world and make a difference and invest in hope now. So I have one final challenge to you if if you're up for it. And that is for you to be like the shrewd manager in that story. There's a whole lot more that we can mine out of that parable from Jesus as there are from almost all of his parables. One of the things the shrewd manager recognized is that we hold all things in common. Despite what my bank account says, or what your bank account says, or what is in my house, or what is in your dwelling, we hold all things in common. 
So recognize that and start canceling other people's debt. Consumer debt and student debt is a huge issue in our country. Medical debt as well. You can form small circles of people in the congregation here that are vulnerable about their wealth and their debt while also learning better financial practices. Then the group starts paying down one another's debt one at a time. Barbara Fullerton, in a study of thousands of churches in the United Church of Canada, found that churches that offered financial uh, well-being courses not only grew their giving, but grew their churches by offering that in the church and in the community. So many of us are stuck about what to do with our money, just how to manage it. Another thing some churches do in this regard is one Sunday a year, mostly Mennonite churches that I know of, but there are others, One Sunday a year, they have everyone take a piece of paper and write either their financial need or their financial abundance on it. And they must write their name as well. I have to to learn more about this. But if you're interested, I would learn it for you. And then they collect those pieces of paper and they start matching them up and start literally paying off the debts that people have with the generosity of others in the community. These will be radical steps. Radical steps. These would be life-changing steps. These would be investing in hope steps. These would be steps that would be truly good news, gospel to those involved, to the church, and to the whole community around. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of, and I hope that you do too. In these ways, you will be shrewd. You will do good, be rich in good works, generous and ready to share thus storing up for yourselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future so that you may take hold of the life that really is life and welcomed even now in the eternal home of our God. May it be so. Amen. Some announcements. We have a couple of opportunities for generosity in our announcements today. (laughs) Save the date. Our annual outdoor worship service will be held on Sunday, July 25 at North End Park. More details to come. Here's the thing. We are looking for someone to play the guitar at our outdoor service. If you know anyone, please let Paul know. There's your chance. Our parking lot needs to be resurfaced and repainted. We have raised $550 toward the cost of $8,700. We are asking for donations to cover the cost. If you are able to donate to the parking lot fund, make sure to write parking lot on the check or the envelope. Please join us in the parlor after worship today to enjoy cake, coffee, and punch to continue the graduation celebration. Our call to offering. If you are with us in the sanctuary, you may leave your offering gift in the plate at the back of the church. If you are joining us from your home or out in God's creation, we invite you to take some time to consider partnering in the ministry of this church through gifts sent to the church office or given electronically through our Donate webpage. Thank you for being a part of this community and the ministry we offer together. The offertory music is all through the night.
some prayer requests this morning. Please keep Donna Dunstone in your prayers as she recovers from a broken shoulder suffered a few weeks ago. She is taking physical therapy and the doctor is hopeful that no surgery will be needed. She is at home and doing well. Pray for Bill and Nancy B as they continue to heal. Pray for Marilyn and Sherm Loken who are experiencing health issues. Pray for Roger and Peggy Peterson who are grieving the death of Roger's sister, Mary Kester. Thank you. to me and which I deeply appreciate and have enjoyed conversations with a number of you. Uh, at the end of our prayer is the Lord's Prayer, which you're invited to say words which you are comfortable with. Um, and if you're ever interested, you can Google Lord's Prayer or versions of the Lord's Prayer and find some wonderful, wonderful renderings of it uh, that for me anyway have often brought new life and new breath into it. Let us pray. Generous and ever giving God, we come to you today in confidence. For this world in which we live and move and breathe and play and work is your world, brought into being through your love for all people and creation. God, we pray that you will teach us how to provide for our own lives, mindful of our own needs yet also to follow the call of Christ to put our trust in you. Help us spend our time and our money in a matter that is worthy of your reign of love in this world. Help us to recognize the ways in which we are already generous and to celebrate those. Teach us to be generous as you have been generous with us. Teach us that all we are and have are gifts from you gifts meant to be shared. Show us the joys of generosity. Help us to understand that others, perhaps unknown to us, depend on us. Remind us that our world needs good Samaritans and shrewd managers to heal the wounds of our time. Lord, make this church a place of generosity where people work together, giving all that they are and all that they have so that the wonderful resources of our world may be better stewarded and shared and cared for. Make us a gift to others in your name. We pray especially for this congregation and for Greg Larson as they come together for a time starting in August. May, that, may the generous welcome that is here embrace Greg as pastor. And may this church embrace his gifts and he embrace with love this community. God, we pray and give thanks for Rhea and for her graduation and this time of transition and new chapters in her life. We pray that for all the graduates of this church and for those in this community and those we know and love near and far who are moving on to new stages in their life, who are celebrating having come through a period of education and growth and change. Bless them with hope and grace and joy and discernment as they move forward through this time. We also lift up others who are in the midst of life transitions, who are moving, who are starting new schools or ending at other schools. Those who are getting married this summer, we ask your blessing on them. Those who are expecting children. God, we pray also for peace in this world, for an end to violence from the mass shootings that happen all too regularly. Heal us, O oh God. 
to the wars that continue to go on in this world. May we be so bold to pray for a world without war, a world at peace with justice, not peace that comes through violence, your peace that passes understanding. God, we pray for those who are struggling with their physical health. For Donna, we pray healing of her shoulder. We offer our prayers for Bill and Nancy for continued healing and for Marilyn and Sherm. And we pray for Roger and Peggy as they mourn the death of their sister, Mary. We lift up them and their families, as well as others who are mourning and grieving over the loss of loved ones. God, we pray for the Grand West Association of the UCC, the Michigan Conference, the United Church of Christ, the Presbyterian Church, and the Presbytery here. May your grace and love be funneled through each of these settings of the church that we might more fully know you and live into the image in which we are created, your body. We give you thanks for this beautiful environment in which we live, for the green and the sunshine and the water and the warmth. And we give you thanks that you have taught us how best to live, how we might have life abundant, and how to pray. And now we pray in the name in the words that Jesus taught his friends, his family, his followers, his disciples to pray, saying together, Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, siblings in Christ, go in peace to live fully, to love wastefully, and to have the courage to be who God has made you to be. And God's people say, Amen.
for listening to our radio broadcast. While our in-person church activities have been reduced, we are still available to meet your spiritual needs. If you would like to receive a bulletin prior to the Sunday broadcast, please contact the church office. You can reach the church office by phone Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 231-527-9567. You can also leave a message at this number after business hours. If this broadcast has lifted your spirits, perhaps this church is meant for you. Let's explore that possibility together. May God bless you and give you peace. This concludes our live broadcast.